Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Takuya Yokoyama's play Carcass. Um, I think this is kind of a difficult play, probably for non-Japanese people to really fully understand, um, in part because there's a particular cultural taboo in Japan, according to the introduction um, by Yuichi uh, Uchida. Um, there's a particular cultural taboo around the slaughter and processing of animals that just doesn't exist in, for instance, U.S. culture. I mean, the closest that I can think of... So, so I mean, um, Uchida here says... Prior to the opening of Japan with the Meiji Restoration, the consumption of four-legged animals was prohibited. This was due to ancient practices that avoided the shedding of blood as a form of ritual pollution, as well as to the influence of Buddhism, which forbade the killing of living creatures. Groups responsible for the slaughtering of cows and horses, or those who dealt with corpses, existed at the very bottom of the pre-modern social hierarchy. Even after the prohibition against eating animal flesh was lifted in the 19th century, such people were discriminated against and segregated into ghettos. They were called Burukumen, which literally means village people. Their history of engaging in such dangerous jobs as slaughtering of animals also coincides with the immigration of laborers from the Korean peninsula during Japan's colonial period. So there's this taboo around working in a slaughterhouse, which is where this play is set, The closest things I can think of maybe in the U.S. would be something like maybe garbage collectors or um, people who work in sewage treatment facilities or brothels. Like, I don't think there's really quite a good analog <clears throat> to the... The, pro the stigmatized social status of the two uh, the two characters here who work in a slot in the slaughterhouse. Um, so that's Genda and Sawamura. Um, that being said, the play isn't massively about that, although that does come up some um, because their their sort of workspace is I don't want to say invaded because that makes it sound violent, but um the the space where they work it is there's another guy who's sent to the space where they work. Um Toru Imai, Imai sorry Toru Imai um, and he is the son of one of their the company's biggest contractors. Um, so he is sent to basically just wait in this sort of rest area. That it's a sort of work slash rest area um, where uh, Sawamura and Genda are are having their break after their shift. Um, Imai doesn't particularly understand the slaughterhouse business or farming, um, the raising of, of animals, because he's largely just sort of been, I don't know, sort of beau sebrer, man about town, doing sort of random stuff. Like, he, he's been living a life of pleasure, basically. Uh, which for him mostly means like karaoke and talking at restaurants, um, which Sawamura is not particularly impressed with. He wanted like, I don't know, sexy exploits or something like this. Um, but Imai just, he seems like a, a kind of, you know, boring dude slightly. But because they are from different social classes and 
this slaughterhouse is financially struggling and the M the MI Farms contract is a big contract for them, when Sawamura learns that he is the son of the president of that company, um, Sawamura's attitude changes. He had initially been very sort of critical and very um, derisive of Imai's worldview and this idea that Imai could just sort of jump into a management role, etc., etc. He then becomes pretty servile and and kind of crawling in the attempt to to ensure that they can keep uh, the Imai Farms contract. Genda, on the other hand, is basically just like, yeah, I don't care. Rich kids, I don't care. If we lose the contract, we lose the contract. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Um, while all this is going on, there is this issue with a missing brainstem. Because this is a period where uh, they're concerned about um, mad cow disease. And what they do is they they would take the brain stem of the animal and test it to make sure that the meat was safe, basically. If they lose a brain stem, then they can't test that animal. So they they lose that the ability to sell that animal, and then the slaughterhouse has to compensate the farmer for that for that animal, for that lost uh, product. So that uh, does end up happening. Um, there is a there's a, a a guy who seems to be Genda's good friend um, Yanagi, who seem who has apparently lost this brainstem, um, and it's there's a, a bunch of tension about where Yanagi has gone to, and he has taken a slaughter gun with him, so they are afraid he's going to kill himself. Um, so yeah, and and. We later find out that Genda has actually taken the brainstem for reasons not completely clear. Um, and then he and Sawamura end up having a big fight about this, about whether or not to just return it. Um, Imai ultimately sort of gets involved and he ends up threatening to expose them as having the brainstem, at which point Sawamura... Um, takes a, a picture of Imai threatening Genda with a knife and holding the brainstem. So they end up basically blackmailing him into to making sure that the company, Imai Farms, keeps the, the contract with them. It's a whole thing. The plot line itself is actually pretty straightforward, and I don't have a massive amount to say about this play beyond just that's the basic plot line. Um, but the thing that I do find somewhat interesting is that there's a lot of discussion of labor issues and questions about workers' rights, people being laid off, and their work being sort of redistributed back onto other people who work there. This is a, a huge problem in labor forces, not just in Japan, but in the U.S. as well. Uh, we see this in Western Europe. Um, to a lesser extent, I think, since Western Europe has a bit more of a robust social safety net than the U.S. Um, but we see this in a lot of places where neoliberal economics has become the dominant force, because the idea is basically, if you can, if you can have fewer people do more labor for the same money, then that's better for business. It's not better for labor, though. So those kinds of issues come up. There's a lot of discussion of how the slaughterhouse has downsized its workforce, and basically more people are being required. Or more, the people who remain are being required to do the work of those who are gone without getting additional money and things like this. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of labor issues discussion. Which definitely translates sort of beyond the the immediate space of this slaughterhouse. Um, these are general labor issues, things that that exist sort of across the board. Um, and, and 
yeah, I, it's an interesting play. I just I don't have a massive amount to say about it beyond there's some interesting labor issues discussed. 